Side of the Dynasty Draft Room. This is the Draft Seminar. I am Matt Hicks, the FF Educator, joined by John Lobb, the Gridiron Scholar. John, today we're going to be talking about a player that has a lot of hype here going into the draft process, at least with the Dynasty Fantasy Football community. And he definitely deserves the platform. I'm glad we're talking about him, but I do think it's a guy we got to pump our brakes about getting too excited about. And that's LaMichael P. Ryan, the running back out of Florida. John, you want to go ahead and jump into things here? Absolutely. And I was really bullish on LaMichael P. Ryan last summer. And I was drafting him in my college fantasy football leagues. But man, not only did he have a poor fantasy season, he just kind of had a down season overall. Now, there's a role for him in the NFL, in my opinion. He's an all-purpose back who orchestrated a very consistent career in the SEC. So you've got to pay attention to a young man with that on his resume. During his tenure at Gainesville, he performed in 50 games, and he concluded his career eighth in rushing yards. And the Gators have had some very prolific runners. So he's had a good career there. In 2019, he was the team co-captain. He's a very high-character individual who is a leader on the gridiron and in the locker room. In 2019, he was the Orange Bowl MVP with 139 yards on 13 carries. He also had five catches for 43 yards and three touchdowns. So you see the ceiling with LaMichael Pirine. The problem was we don't have a lot of those games to look at. He did lead Florida in rushing three consecutive campaigns, 2017 to 2019. Now, this can either be a a check or or a minus, depending on how you look at it. He was cousins to Shamaj P. Ryan and Miles Jack. What do you think about um, Michael P. Ryan, Matt? Yeah, John, I mean, P. Ryan is somebody who I've, you know, seen definitely firsthand here following and covering the SEC and I understand why he's on people's radars. He has flashy plays, and I think that if you're somebody who, you know, keys in on the highlight reel, you get excited about P. Ryan. And we're going to go through some of those highlights here today and reasons to be excited about him. But when you look at P. Ryan consistently over the course of time, that's when things start to fade off a little bit here, John. So there's nothing quite that pops out to me right away when it comes to him. But I'm interested to talk a little bit more through his production, John, and how that lines up to what you project for uh, NFL success uh, for running backs. Yeah, his production model is not great. It has some very nice numbers. But overall, I say, I would say it's disappointing. He only had 2,485 career rushing yards. Now, he averaged five yards per carry, and that's my benchmark. So I'm okay with that. He had 72 receptions, so he is a three down back and he can catch the football. But like I mentioned, his 2019 season was very disappointing. He only had 938 yards from scrimmage. And his team scrimmage yards was a very underwhelming 17%. So the production his senior year really concerned and it began to raise a red flag. Now, when he went to the combine, I was definitely disappointed in his raw athletic ability. His 40-yard dash was a 4.62, his three-cone drill was a 7.13, and his 20-yard shuttle was a 4.31. All of them were underwhelming scores. He's not a high-end athlete. He is a good running back, and he has skills that will translate. Matt, what does the film say about LaMichael Pirine? Yeah, John, let's go ahead and jump into the film here for LaMichael Pirine, the running back out of Florida here. And we're going to start it off against South Carolina. Talk about his explosiveness in between the tackles. He's definitely a physical guy. He shoots off the line here against the Gamecocks, and he gets 20 yards. He gets it pretty easily once he gets to that second level. Uh, This next play here, we're seeing his pass-catching upside. I think this is the key to potential fantasy success for P. Ryan because he, for as physical of a runner as he is, he is actually a pretty good pass catcher, and you can see here against Auburn, he displays that. Tracks this ball well, soft hand, spins off of a defender, and then keeps fighting forward. That's a trend in his tape. He falls forward, and that's something I'd love for my running backs. He does have the ability to accelerate here. You can see against Virginia, he gets skinny, 
squeezes through the hole, and he bursts upfield. And once he hits that second level, the Virginia defensive back is not able to catch up to him. That's a 60-yard touchdown, even though he took a good route to try to catch up to him. And we talked about his pass catching ability. Good ball tracking and soft hands here against Florida State. He gets dropped off a bad pass, misled but he's able to extend, not only catch the ball, but keep his head up and get downfield and make a big play out of something that looked broken. So you can see here, when it comes to the highlights and the flashes of success, but Michael Pirine, he does a lot well, and I could see why, you know, your eyes could get big here as an NFL team or a fantasy football player. But when it comes back to production, John, something to keep in mind here is that the Florida offense really does focus a lot around the running attack. They have one of the best defenses in the SEC, they keep the score low, and they want to pound the rock. So you would have liked to see more consistency there from P. Ryan. Man, Matt, he looks the part coming out of the SEC, coming out of a prestigious program. He's 5'11", 216 pounds. He's compact and powerfully built. He is a patient ball carrier with good vision, not great. I do project him down as a three-down back because he's a good pass catcher, and he can pass block. He's a relentless runner who is difficult to tackle. I do think he has a role in the short yardage game. He's good there. He can get skinny and find the first down or the end zone for you. He retains balance through contact. He has subtle shifts and sharp cuts to avoid tacklers. He's just not high-end athleticism while he's making cuts. He's hard-charging competitor with good leg drive. He's intuitive in the end zone. He does find Pater. So I think this young man will have a role in the NFL, Matt. I like him, but I think he's a late day three pick. I think that's absolutely right. Here, John, at the Dynasty Draft Room, we have him graded out at a 75.4. That does project him to be a rotational player, but that's just 0.4 points away from our special teams backup category. So he's right on the brink here. We like that he's a powerful runner. He always falls forward, and he does have that pass-catching potential like we mentioned. So there is a, a, a place and a ceiling here for LaMichael P. Ryan in the NFL, and he's definitely somebody, although we've kind of tried to temper your expectations here on this episode, we do also want to make sure you understand that he has a point of value here in your fantasy football rookie drafts, and so he's absolutely somebody who has the ceiling and that upside potential. You can find all of John's fantasy football rookie profiles at footballdiehards.com, and he's on Twitter at gridironschol91. I am on Twitter at the FF underscore educator, and you can find all of my work at dynastydraftroom.com. That does include the 2020 fantasy football rookie guide, which is now available for download, packed full of 91 player profiles, similar to everything we've given you here to look for Michael P. Ryan, but so much more. Thanks for listening. Class is over.